Hello, everybody, and welcome to this latest in the Values Jam guest session series. And Nadej, brilliant to have you with us today. And to start with, please introduce yourself and tell everybody about the great work that you do. Hello, Alan. And well, first of all, thank you for this opportunity. I'm so glad to be here with you today. And well, just to see where the discussion will lead you, will lead us. So looking forward to it. Uh, what, what do I do? Well, in short, I help project managers, their teams and organizations to communicate better. Because I've been myself a project manager for some time and working in program management. And I saw that actually uh, a communication that was not really what you would call a good communication really hindered uh, the delivery of the project. And uh, so given that experience, my own experience, and also my international experience, I've lived in five different countries and worked with people from all over the world, basically, I decided to combine all that to offer yeah, services to help projects to be delivered more smoothly, basically, and to make it enjoyable. Again, instead of being this kind of almost nightmare environment where a lot of people just don't want to be, really. <laughs> Great. And, and how can people get in touch with you? So the best way to get in touch with me is via LinkedIn. So if you look for my name, Nadej Minois, and you will have it, it will have a PhD afterwards in uh, in LinkedIn. But uh, basically, that's me. And you can find me there, connect and send me a message. And I'll be very happy to connect back and uh, to answer your message. Brilliant. OK. And um, listen, I'm curious. I need to ask you a question. Which five countries have you lived in? So, well, I include France, where I'm from, and I also lived in the USA, in Germany, Austria, and the UK, basically. Right. Okay. And that was for 24 years, and I've been back to France for now almost two years, so after 24 years in different countries. Wow, you must have noticed some change. Yes. <laughs> yes, no, definitely. There were a lot, uh, a lot of a lot of differences, obviously, culture and, and everything was different in each of these places. And also changes in myself. I can see that after all this time, I'm back in France, but I can see that, yes, maybe my passport says that I'm French and I have French citizenship, but I'm not quite French anymore culturally and the way I see the world. And <laughs> so a lot of changes, external and internal, yes. Yeah, really important to highlight that, isn't it? Because I think a lot of people, and I just did it, didn't I? I the, the assumption was the place you returned to has changed, but actually... The change in yourself is probably just as relevant, important, just as big. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do now is uh, tip out the Values Jam card deck cards. And uh, so how many piles would you like me to make in front of me? Three piles, please. Three piles. Okay, they're different oh, sizes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So pile one is on my left okay. and pile three is on my right. So which number pile would you like me to choose? I'll go for two, the middle. <laughs> the middle. Okay, well, it's the smallest pile. And okay. two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. So a number between one and 16 to choose our card. I'll take seven. Lucky seven. Yeah, with the edge of my dog. So I'll just oh, say, okay, okay. seven. <laughs> well, interesting that you should choose this card when you mention your dog. <laughs> Trust. Ah. So um, the first question is, what does trust mean? And what does it look, feel and sound like? It means everything to me. 
uh, because in well, what I mean is that I think trust really is is the basis for for almost everything else. Um, what it feels like, um, it feels like having a cozy jumper on a cold day. <laughs> you know, when when you're in a place of trust, you're in a place where, yeah, you feel you feel cozy, you feel comfortable, uh, you feel loved and understood, and and. Um, and it's it's reciprocal, you know. It, it it's it the same. Is that you also love and understand and make other people comfortable? Yeah, and I, I for me, I'll I agree with the. I love that cozy jumper on a cold day feeling and the other things that you've mentioned. But something that's come to me, which is a bit different, is that I think when you trust somebody. Uh, you become braver um, because you feel safe. Uh, so yeah. I guess as a result of the things that you were mentioning, that emboldens you uh, if you feel that you're in a trusted environment. So I'm thinking of, for instance, um, you know, I'll, I'll give you the opposite first and then uh, the example that came to mind. Imagine a corporate uh, environment. Well, one of your project management meetings, I guess. <laughs> and many times people are sitting there, maybe wondering whether they should ask this question or say this thing. But because they don't feel like it's a trusted environment, they are not brave enough to say it because they think people will think they're being stupid. Um, whereas when you do create that trusted environment, then people are much more willing to come forward. Uh, do, you, do you relate to that from your previous experience? Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, absolutely. That's definitely something that, you know, as soon as you have a team, um, this is definitely something you, you can feel, you can sense, whether there's trust between the team members and then you will have yes open communication you know you're in a place where well you can make mistakes and say well I made this mistake this didn't just go as i thought it would go and 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 it's all right it's all right you know that you have other people back and and you know that's um and that makes a very very huge difference than when you don't have trust and People don't speak to each other. Basically, they don't dare to to share things, and uh, and they blame each other. And so, you know, always passing the buck to someone else. And uh, and so, so that that's something that definitely, definitely you you see. And and you know, when I say that I help project managers and their team with with communication, um, basically having that trust establishing that trust is definitely a, a very very big part of it and and yes you related that to safety you know being in a safe environment and that's absolutely i totally agree with that it's what trust gives you it it gives it gives you that net you know that you can fall and yeah. you know that that you're okay basically you have that you have that safety net Mm. yeah yeah uh, there's a saying i'm not sure if i'll get the saying exactly word for word but it's something along the lines of trust takes a long time to build and can be broken in an instant um and i'm curious to understand in in your experience where you've got project teams or project managers who are seeking to establish a sense of trust but they haven't got a long time to be able to do that right so how do you accelerate creating this environment of trust or is it not possible um well it's i think it is possible and probably a lot of people might not agree with what with what i'm going to say but at the end, trust is a decision. You decide to trust someone 
or not, based on the experience you had with that person, with facts, with and and and, and you know whatever, and, and a lot of things will come into that. You know, like we have confirmation bias, and so if if you already have a negative feeling about someone, you will try to confirm and confirm that, and and in that case, you will never build trust. So, since if if we take this assumption that trust is a decision, to me, the way to begin is you have a team. You probably don't know many of these people. You know, you might not know them. Well, why don't you begin with trust? And you begin with that in mind. Okay, this is the end. You, you begin with trust. I'm going to trust these people. And then until I've got things that I say, no, I can't trust these people. And then say, okay, how do I do to keep on trusting them to establish a genuine trust? But basically, to me, I know, and, and it, it sounds probably easier said than done, but begin with trust. Well, look, look, look at a conversation, okay? If we were not beginning with kind of trust, and say, it's going to be okay, and I'm going to trust that person, we would never have that conversation, okay? So so begin with trust. Yeah, and I, what's um, really strange is that you've reminded me of uh, a place I used to work, and um, like you, I tend to start from a position of trust because, well, what else can you do? You know, you it's not a particularly enjoyable attitude if you're just going to be mistrusting everybody to begin with I mean why would why would people do that so uh, I'm with you and I get where you're coming from and when I left that role um, my successor I heard a story um, and I, I need to give you a bit of context here so a uh, part of the business was a golf club and, um, you know, on a golf course, you can either walk around or you can have golf buggies. Yeah. And so we had lots of golf buggies parked near the golf club uh, so that people could use these when they came on the course. And uh, my successor asked the director of golf to make sure that the buggies were moved regularly so that, you know, if one wasn't used for a long time, then uh, it wouldn't be suffering, the tires wouldn't be suffering because they would be moved in different positions. And then I heard that he actually one evening put chalk marks on the tires so that he could check to see whether the people had done what he had asked them to do. And when I heard this, it was such a shock because this was completely the opposite of the way I had managed the place before. And of course, some I will never know, but sometimes people maybe had taken advantage. Um, but what I do know is that by him making that small decision to act in that way, it created a huge negative impression of him as a leader. Um, and it's impossible to uh, quantify that, and it's impossible to estimate what the repercussions were, but you can imagine. Hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. No, that's what a parking warden would, <laughs> would do to make sure that people didn't stay parked. Yeah, and, and, and you know, Going back to going back to your quote, that that's absolutely a, a, an example of how you can lose trust and, and respect in in a minute, in an instant. You know, you you do something, and then suddenly people think, "Well, what what is that? I'm not." Uh, you know, I'm not here to be to be controlled. I'm not here for my action to be doubted. And uh, so, yeah, just in a, in an instance, and you it's, lose uh, you lose that trust. Yeah, and you you just now you said uh, something like I'm going to say something now that not everybody will agree with. So I'm going to join you. 
by saying something that maybe not everybody's going to agree with. And that is that by, well, I think many leaders overestimate their capability and the impact that they can have personally. And so just to put this into simple numbers, imagine that you're heading up a team with say 200 people in the team. You cannot control what every one of those 200 people do. And if you can inspire those 200 people to give 10% more than they previously did, then that adds up to a whole lot of extra value that's being created by concentrating not on you as the leader, but on them as the people that are part of the team. Uh, so I've I've always found it curious that leaders seem to think, or many leaders seem to think that it's all about them. Whereas I've always thought that the leader's role is simply to create the environment and allow people to go and do their best. And in that way, the leader will be successful. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, I, uh, I, I agree. I, I agree with that. Uh, it's not. It's not about the leader, you know. It's uh, well, the leader basically to me a, a leader, if they want to lead, they should lead by example. So so basically, they yeah, you can say they kind of set how they would like the team to to behave and uh, and and to work. And basically, everything we do says something everything we say says something about us and so and so yes leaders should do the things that as you say enable other people to say yes i'll do more yes i want to be part of that but it's not because it is that guy or because that guy and uh, that guy says it or, or or you know something like that that kind of uh influencer type i know that influencer mm -hmm. is in fashion you know influencer uh type thing and saying well can't you think for yourself <laughs> yeah absolutely and, uh, yeah 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 and there's a caveat I, I think to what we're talking about here because um to use a french phrase of laissez-faire that's not what we mean by saying that we trust somebody right so I remember in whenever I had teams, I put a lot of effort into making it very clear what we were all aiming to be achieved. And then I trust you to take us in that direction. So it's not, you know, in a vacuum, it's not saying I trust you, whatever you do. Um, that's that's completely different. So while we're in this space, can you give me an example of when you have noticed a lack of trust. So if you think back either professionally or personally of a time when there was a lack of trust. Hmm. I'm trying to think of the uh, the best example here, not that I don't have it. <laughs> um, I don't have example. Um, well, a very simple one. Yeah, it's a very personal one. Are you? Is that okay? I mean, I, I... yeah, yeah. If not, I wouldn't share it. Okay. Um, but because that's that's exactly what people told me in that in that instance, and uh, and also I could partly understand why, but so whatever. It's that. Um, I was about to go to university, basically last year of uh, of high school, and uh, go to university. So in, in France, like it's still mostly the case. Basically, you you know you just have to go and pay the fee for university. You don't have in in most of them. You don't have a selection entry as long as you have a a high school degree and uh, and things like that. And, and obviously, as it is mostly still today, the best universities in France are in Paris. And uh, but just before that, basically, my parents told me, you're not going to go to Paris because we don't trust you going to Paris. OK. 
<laughs> so it might sound very harsh and uh, and yes but no i i can understand why because i was i was quite outspoken i'm 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 quite strongly minded, if I can say. I've got, you know, I've got my opinion. I'm, I'm very tolerant to others' opinions, you know. But I've got, I've got mine. This is how I see the world and things like that. And I totally understand and accept others. That's not, that's, that's not the problem. I would have, wouldn't have fared very well in, in five different countries if it had been, uh, if it had been otherwise. That's something that really, uh, uh, this experience taught me basically to really that uh, that that tolerance, but still, uh, you know, I, I've got my idea, and I like my ideas to be respected in a way, and uh, yeah. and so so you know they had that in mind, and so they said no, and that that's what they said. We don't trust you, <laughs> so you'll have to find a university elsewhere. <laughs> So, so that, that, that's my example. I, I find myself wanting to ask you whether you think, so that's some years ago, right? Oh, yes, decades so ago. When, when <laughs> that you was think, in another century. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when you think about that exchange, it makes me wonder whether whether it really was trust or whether it was more fear. So... Do you think they didn't trust you or do you think they were just scared of what might happen to you? Yeah, I think I, I, I think you were right. Basically, um, I think what probably what they were untrusting was, if I can say, my ability to keep quiet and to keep clear of trouble. <laughs> So I think that's what they were not trusted, probably. And so, yes, they were fearing um, the consequences of uh, of that. I think I think you're you're totally right. And it, it was not a lack of trust in me as as an individual, you know. Yeah. And but again, thinking back to that time, can you remember how you reacted to that? Um, I was very miffed about it. Um, not not that I was particularly uh, planning to go to a university in Paris. You know, I even I didn't talk about that actually. Uh, so they they really preempted the whole thing. But probably they preempted it because my sister went to. A university in Paris for the first two years of uh, a university life, and so probably they had that that in mind. And so, so I think at that time I was probably miffed to be refused something that she was able to do, um, thinking that she's not better than I am. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, no, no. So so definitely, um, definitely at the, at the time I. I I did not take it very well, for sure, for sure, yeah. So I've got um, two examples to share. Um, the first one was I started a job in a business that was losing a lot of money. And um, in discussing the remuneration package, a bonus was raised as being part of the arrangement. So what my future boss uh, suggested was that he would be willing to give me a percentage of the reduction in the loss that was made. And I trusted him. I didn't um, request the details. I trusted the, the basic arrangement. Then one year later, <clears throat> I, the area that I was responsible for, I had reduced the loss by one million pounds. And for my performance review, I said to him, I'd now like to discuss with you the percentage of this that will form my bonus. And he said, 
Uh, well, the problem is that even if we have 1% as the bonus, I will not be able to get it approved by head office. And so therefore, there can be no bonus. And a bit like, I love the way you use the word miffed. <laughs> I have, <laughs> so I was, I was very miffed. Um, but the, and I never got that money. Um, but the way I rationalized it to myself was that the bonus was simply recognition of the achievement. And it was the achievement that was more valuable to me than any financial recognition of the achievement. Um, and then you using the word miffed brought the other example. So this was in a kind of training development day. And there was a game between two teams. And what had to happen was that you were given an objective and then members of the team had to go and negotiate a certain point in order to decide the next step. And everybody had to do that in turn. We were told at the beginning that the golden rule was that you must tell the truth. So we started the game and I was the final negotiator. And I think there were six or seven rounds. We believed that we were doing very well. And I went to the final negotiating spot, confident that we were going to win. So we conducted the negotiation, uh, everything was complete, and the facilitator said that they were going to announce the results, and he announced that the other team had won. And we, our team was just really shocked. And I was really upset because I thought we had won. Um, and I went to the leader of the other team and I said, I'm not, how did you do that? We can't work out how that was the result. And he said, oh, in the last round of negotiation, I lied to you. I was furious. I nearly hit the guy. You know, I was like beside myself. Um, and just to finish that off, I remember driving far too fast home, uh, around about 200 miles. And then my daughter, uh, she was five. Do you know the game Tiddlywinks? No. Nope. All right. So uh, you basically have a small pot and then you have plastic discs. Mm -hmm. And you press one disc onto another. Yes, yeah. so that it lands in the little disc lands into the pot. Okay, I, I just didn't know the name in English. Okay, is it in French? <laughs> I can't remember in French. <laughs> you did, uh, say but I used to French. play that when I was a small kid. Yes, yeah. Okay. Well, so and I think les puces I played... sauteuses. Sauteuses. I think les puces. Yeah, oh, like fleas. Can... You know things that were jumping like fleas. Yeah. Okay. So I played her and beat her about 20 times mm. <laughs> because I was still like, so, so mad about it. Um, but there, so I'm, I, why did I share those? I, it was because you used the word miffed and it reminded me of how bad it made me feel when trust is broken uh, in that way. And what about on the positive side then? So when have you experienced trust? When when I was in jobs where people would ask me to basically do something and just let me get on with it, knowing that uh, yeah that's okay, uh, I'm going I'm going to do it, you know. So definitely, so that's trust, uh, trust in my uh, trust in my abilities. Um, can you think of a specific example that you'd like to share? Um, well, specific, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, specific example. So I used to work in uh, at some point in uh, program management. And my job title at that time was a PMO process lead. 
And basically, my job was to to kind of uh, codify and set up processes for the the program to to work more harmoniously. And uh, and so basically, it was and and things we we didn't have any processes, you know, things so. So one thing I did and I was trusted in doing was putting in place the whole process for risks and issues management. So I put in place the, the physical tool, you know, in the IT, IT tool, the, the processes of review and analysis and, and things like that. And so, okay, can you, can you do that? Basically, just, uh, just do it as a, and uh, so... So that's that was uh, that was uh, one example, and then there was some kind of uh, um, indirect trust again in your ability. So basically, you know, references by other people, so which actually show the trust of of other people had in you to uh, to to recommend. Uh, to, to recommend so you know once it uh, it happened I was a, at a conference and somebody came and took to me and they said yeah uh, you've been uh, you've been recommended would you um we've got this opening basically we are replacing our head of laboratory uh would you come and be um no I, I didn't know about it but because you know there was that trust from the person who was my boss at the time and uh, so, so these 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 are examples. Yeah, so I, I love those examples. It's like the second one has reminded me of. Um, I think Jeff Bezos says that your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. Yeah, and that's a great example there of when people were recommending you because they trusted you. Uh, they didn't need to tell you about it. They just told somebody else. Uh, hmm. Mine, mine is, uh, again, a business one where I was responsible for um, a contract um, and a service provider uh, for looking after documentation, archiving and that sort of thing. And the contract had been in place for many years. And I felt that it was appropriate to go to market. Um, to just see that we were getting the best value for money. Um, we weren't. <laughs> we discovered that we were paying something like 30% more than the price that we could gain with somebody new. Um, we didn't necessarily want to part company with the current supplier, and so we were transparent with them about the opportunity that we had on the mm -hmm. price to give them the opportunity to consider whether they wanted to do anything about their offer. Uh, they chose not to. And so we started the process to change suppliers. Um, I then heard from my boss that uh, there was pressure being put on him because the company was a banking client of the organization that I was working with. So they were trying to say, you should give us the contract because we're an important customer for you. Mm -hmm. um, in the end, my boss trusted me to go to meet the chairman of the company in Boston to explain that we had given them every opportunity at every stage to be able to retain the contract and that for whatever reason, because we weren't aware, his people had decided not to match the price that we were able to get with somebody else. And it was a bizarre experience because uh, we went to, to Boston. We went to this big flash office. Um, there was myself and another guy, a relationship manager from the bank. We were escorted to the chairman's office. Um, we had a, I think it was a 45 minute appointment. When we arrived, he was very amicable, uh, offered us refreshments. Um, then he sat at the, his side of a massive desk. We were sitting the other side on two small chairs. And uh, he said, could you explain to me your decision-making process? So 
not in a lot of detail, but I went through the stages, including informing his team about the opportunity. Um, and when I finished, he said, thank you, and stood up and escorted us out. And I never found out what happened to anybody, but I'm guessing he wasn't best pleased. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, my, my what my boss did not do was take that responsibility away from me. He didn't mm -hmm. go himself. He didn't mm -hmm. give in. Um, he trusted in the decision. So that felt really fulfilling, actually, mm -hmm. um, when it would have been easier. And I'm sure we can both think of examples where people have given in to pressure from above because mm -hmm. it's uncomfortable, mm -hmm. yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So, Nadej, in Values Jam, there's also an opportunity for you to ask your own question. So um, I'm going to invite you to ask your own question about trust, which begins with who, what, where, when, why or how. And then either I'll give a go at answering it or you can to start with and we'll see where that goes. Mm hmm. Um... Well, a simple one. Well, at least grammatically simple. <laughs> I don't know what the answer. Why do we trust? Why do we trust? What a brilliant question. And have you got some ideas or are you? did that just come in a flash and you'd like me to just have a go at a response? Begin, begin. I've, I've, okay. I've got some idea, but please do begin. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to, to help me get into this i'm going to make it very personal so rather than thinking generally about why do people trust i i translated that into why do i trust and i think for me there's no alternative because the opposite of mistrusting everybody all the time is just a misery and life is too short for that that's the first piece of it and then the second piece i think is to do with the reward um, for the effort that goes in, because in my experience, when you give trust, you get so much more back than if you do not. So I think it's that combination. One, the opposite is kind of unpalatable. And two, the reward can be fantastic. What about you? Hmm, yeah, well, yeah, to me, what I would say might be a little bit more uh, general <laughs> uh, than uh, than yours, and then maybe uh, maybe my view as a, as a former biologist, I don't know, but um, yeah, I, I would say that we are a social species, basically, and uh, so without trust, we couldn't make societies really, really work. Basically, we just we just couldn't because we couldn't interact with each other um, with uh, with our trust and and we already see well we already see there's so many examples of what happens when we have this intolerance and uh, and and lack of of trust. In, in other people, I said, just open a newspaper or whatever the internet uh, news sites, and, uh, and 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 you can see that. And so I think, to me, it's um, it's an extension of what is needed to have the members of a group cohesive, you know, to be yeah. in in cohesion with. Uh, with with each other and so to me it's, it's an extension of that that if if you want to live in societies there has to be some some trust as part of the relationship so well that that's how i see it whether that's so, correct or not if if we take that as your beginning and i i think i i would i agree with what you've laid out um the question, though, that comes for me is that we don't seem to be doing a very good job in many societies. And I was on a call with a, an author called Dan Ariely recently, 
who uh, was, he's a behavioral scientist. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about how we're not uh, designed to be living in the sort of environment that we are now living in. Because um, when we were in nature, for instance, we would examine and observe our surroundings. And from our observations, we would be able to trust what we should do mm. because we were able to assess the situation. Yeah. Um, but now things are a lot more complicated. And so we're not so easily able to assess our environment. And therefore, I think he was saying that we cannot actually trust our own decision making. Uh, so what do you think about that? Mm. Yes, yeah. Well, our decision making is based on what we know. What we know is limited and is biased. So we can say we make the best decision with what we know at the time we know it. Okay, uh, right, but still it's based on limited and biased information. Well, we can't and and it's it it's true that probably from a kind of evolutionary point of view, how thinking hasn't evolved as quickly as our societies. It might it, it might well be. And, and it's true that we're still kind of focused on the kind of small tribes and gatherer type of community. And, uh, and so basically, you know, we kind of trust the family, we trust the tribe, but another tribe we don't trust. And, and, and it's all linked to this kind of, they call, you know, survival aspect and that, that's what I think you you were kind of referring to. You know, we need to assess, is it good for me or is it not? And usually our first reaction when we don't know is that, well, better safe than sorry. So I'm going to assume I don't like it. I don't know it. Uh, it's it's bad. Mm. And and we're still we're still kind of stuck with, with that, basically. That's right. And, and it's... It's it's absolutely all right. It's right that we we don't have that trust, that openness to to a lot of other people and other things. Whether it's just because we say, mm, we don't really know it, so I don't know. I'm I'm not gonna have a good idea about that. And uh, and, and yeah, basically lack of knowledge, lack of interest, and uh, but. Um, but that that reminds me something that uh, my partner actually re reminded me. It it was in thinking one of Darwin's book, not not his uh, Origin of Species, but uh, the one about the evolution of man. I think the ascent of man, where basically has this um, this thing that you know, you you cannot you begin you know you trust. Then your family, after it's not very far to go to trusting your neighborhood, trusting people in your city, trusting people in your country. Say, when you've reached that, what can stop you to go further? That's a lovely. Um, that's that. That's of, of course that's not how he said it. Um, but you know that that was the idea basically. Well, if you begin by trusting. These people, why can't you trust these ones and these ones? And then basically be in peace with with the whole world. But that that's the way it is. And it's true that a lot of the ideas, you know, this ideas of nation, nationalism, which, which is not a very old idea, uh, you know, but that has come so strongly that I say it it's us, it's them. Um, in so many areas of uh, of life that it's true that I think it's right we put ourselves in a, in a position where yeah maybe we just cannot trust that's right mm. and uh, last night I was watching a movie about um, a Native American Indian tribe uh, that discovered oil 
and they benefited obviously from all of the money that was generated from this. But what the film was about was about um, this guy who basically saw a way to benefit from their wealth and was gradually um, killing off the elders of the tribe and through arranged marriages, making sure that the money would be coming to people that were on his side. Now, there was a situation where you had somebody who was totally self-interested and not thinking for the other people, but at the same time putting on a face that could be trusted. Um, and it reminds me of the relationship that many citizens have with their politicians now, where you know the politicians seem to say anything just to get voted in, um, but they're not really acting in the best interest of their citizens, which is what the role is supposed to be. And so you're making me very confused, actually, because on the one hand, just now, we agreed about the importance of trust and why wouldn't you? But now this last five minutes of the conversation, we've been talking about how in modern society, it's a real challenge. So how, how are you processing that contradiction? Mm, yeah, that's um, that's interesting. Yes, no, that's true. That's true. Um, I think probably yeah, the 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 processing probably needs to come from a step by step, you know, like a bit by this Darwin, um saying that you no know, we're talking about trust in teams um to begin with and I say well begin with trust and yes maybe you know we could begin with that so we just learn to trust okay we say I'm gonna go I'm gonna trust these people and this is just a relatively small number it's my team and and learn basically learn from that and embrace it and bet it and then go maybe and try to trust more people. And maybe before trusting, get to know, learn about other things, you know, because without, you know, without knowing, um, basically we can't, we can't trust, we can't like really what, what we don't know. You know, we're, we're talking a lot about you know, climate change and things like that and all what we do about the environment. Um, and, and yes, that, that's great. That Well, that's right. No, it's not great what we do to the environment. Um, that's, that's for sure. But actually, you see that not that many people are interested because if you don't know a thing about the environment and, and you know, it's not... It's not your fault when you don't have the opportunity of studying biology at school at things like that. You don't really know what an insect is or, or, or you know, whatever. You, you don't know how uh, even a, a simple ecosystem works, let alone an ecosystem is. So let alone how it works. You know, if, if you don't know about these things, how can you be interested? So, so first you have to have this idea of, Yes, I want to learn about that. I need to know about it. And then I'll give it my trust, basically. Mm. So, and you I don't know. The, so knowledge and education you've mm. touched on. Um, the other thing that comes to me is about how earlier you mentioned how we haven't evolved as fast as maybe society and the environment around us has. And maybe it's asking too much of us to trust everybody in our nation, for instance, you know, whereas if there was more of a focus on local community and not concerning yourself so much with anything beyond your local community, might that be easier to deal with? Because then trust would be building in these local pockets and then maybe one 
community engages with another and they're both already trusting and so there's more of a chance for that to be happening so it, it makes me wonder whether we're asking too much of ourselves to trust on a big scale when that's not the way it works yes um, yeah no i think it's it, it it's probably one aspect and also something that has just come to my mind is that trust isn't one way yes and that that's something we haven't touched upon but it just i'm saying wait a second trust is not one way so yeah probably we just can't trust everything and everyone because to trust we need to have something in in return yeah and there are some people who the way they will behave what they will say how they will act um that doesn't fit with what you think you can trust yeah and so and so so it's 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 two ways and and i think there's there's probably a very big difference between kind of knowing and understanding accepting and trusting and i think probably trust is that last you know you can learn about something know about something you can accept it even if you don't agree with it but then to have that trust it means that in a way you have to agree with it it has to fit well we're in a value jam <laughs> it has to fit your value it has to fit your beliefs and and then you can have that trust so yeah so so yeah maybe that's right that maybe we just we're at a point in the evolution of our societies where we just can't trust everybody yeah might be might be so but what should we do to reach that point knowing that it's it's not a one way process discussion is open <laughs> it is and uh, we we haven't got time to get into this but you're making me think about how in many societies certainly in the west the focus is on individual achievement and attainment and that is counterproductive to trust because ultimately let's say the two of us are in a situation where there can only be one winner and we're both highly motivated for whatever reason, you will choose to win rather than take care of me. And if that is how society is set up, then the, the chance of us trusting each other is fundamentally flawed. Yeah. Mm. So this is the first values jam that I've, I think I've ever had where we have started a conversation at the end of a values jam so <laughs> we'll have to we'll have to leave that one hanging um because i've got one final question for you uh, nadej and that is what are you encouraged to do differently about trust as a result of our conversation To live by it even more than I might do at the moment, I would say to, uh, um, I, I'm usually quite uh, a trustful person, as you know, I'm not saying as a begin with trust and, and not, not really doing it myself, you know, of course we have, we all have our first impressions and sometimes it, I don't think I really like this, <laughs> you know, for um for for whatever for whatever reason. But it doesn't mean that you won't trust that person. So so basically to learn to uh, yeah yeah to to emphasize that basically even more and and to put that trust even more ahead of the interaction and see and see how it uh, how it changes things yeah and that one at that high level it's similar for me because this conversation has reminded me that 
it could be quite easy to get into a negative spiral about justifying why you can't trust because there's quite a lot in place. Um, but up until now, I tended to start with trust and I'm just kind of, I feel even stronger about that now because of this conversation. And then two other things, um, the movie that I mentioned, I'm going to send you the link just in case you're- Thank you. To Thank you. Uh, and I'm going to finish watching. I think it's more than three hours, which is a bit wow. long. Yeah, so we watched a, about an hour last night, but I, it's uh, fascinating um, to see the way these guys are kind of playing the game. And it's high, I'm going to be thinking of you as I watch it probably later on today. So, Nadesh, you're, you're now a qualified values jammer. So thank you so much for, for joining me. And I trust you enjoyed it. I did. I did. Definitely. Definitely. It was um, 